Mother Earth, thank you for your beauty and for all that you've given me. Remind me never to take from me more than I need and remind me always to give back more than I take. Él es Dios. El río que se corre abajo. Le damos gracias al paz. Al río grande que se va para abajo. Y tienes todos juntos, Criador. Ayudamos en este bonito día. En este momento. En esta vida. Cuídanos. The river is so important to the region, to life itself, for people to be able to get out on the river or experience it in some firsthand kind of visceral way allows an opportunity to really have a sense of how important the river and the water is. Up here, as you're seeing, we've got wide open mesa. We've got the Sangre de Cristo Mountains to our east. But when we get down in the gorge, it's like its own little world down there. That river is life. Most of the wildlife that we see is down there. It's migrating birds, mule deer, bighorn sheep. People really love kind of being able to get on the river and just hear the water flowing. And then to climb out 2,000 feet and have this as scenery, it's really a, kind of an interesting juxtaposition between like high dry desert and really a lush river canyon. Agua es vida, water is life. And in this dry, high desert climate, that's a fact. Without this water, there would be no life here. That's why all the ancient civilizations settled close to this body of water. That's why the big cities downstream are close to this body of water, because this is the source of life right here. And without it, we're a dry desert. We're all connected by water. Good luck, goodbye. Thank you. John Dunn is one of the few roads that comes down into the Rio Grande Gorge. There's petroglyphs in the area, there's plenty of wildlife. It's just a great place to access the beautiful Wild River. Well, the gorge is such a fabulous, rugged, remote, wild place. It's dramatic, it's stark, but it has its own incredible beauty. There's no trails, no roads, once you get past a certain point. And it's just the river, you and the canyon, and the roar of the whitewater. One of my favorite things about river running is its ability to humble us and how powerless we really are in the big picture and how incredible it feels to be in that place of grace where it's just about being focused and in that moment, that present moment and responding to this magnificent force of nature. 
wild settings like this, to, to get deep in with nature, it's really a grounding experience and uh, kind of gives the spirit a lot of room to move and breathe and, and dream. This is where it starts. When we can protect valuable river corridors like this all over the world, as well as here at home. Well, I feel pretty lucky to be on the raft with Leanne. Here. Oh, thank you, John. It's good to have you. In the mornings when I get ready to boat, I will usually greet the river, show some respect to the river or to the waves, the water. You're going to get that in return, and it's a reciprocal energy, I think. It's been kind of fun to keep it really dynamic and fluid like that. I started in 1973, and I've been, uh, this has been my profession since then. Certainly lost count of the number of times I've come out on the Rio Chamba. This is protected as a national wild and scenic river, and right now we're floating through the Hickory Apache Reservation. From here on down, where this hits the Rio Grande at Española, you start to see desert. It's flowing through the desert. It's this absolutely amazing gift. To places like El Paso, there would be no El Paso in El Paso. No Juarez without the Rio Grande. The Rio Chama is the reservoir storage for the Rio Grande. Reservoirs on most main stem rivers that uh, kind of regulate the, the flows, they store water during the runoff and, and regulate it back out during the rest of the season. So this is kind of the last Headwaters tributary coming again. This is how Albuquerque uh, maintains kind of a drought reserve of surface water. Is they've got Abiquiu Reservoir down the way that they store some of this water in. And then upstream, the irrigation water is all in storage. Water is like a great educator. If you're observing, you see a lot about hydrology, about the vectors of a river and the, the work it does and the forms it takes. The Rio Grande is the third longest river in the country and it's one of the most threatened because it's not a tremendously high water volume river. It covers um, over three different states, spans over 1,800 miles, and a lot of it is very threatened, especially south of us here and also north of us up in the San Luis Valley where there's a ton of irrigation occurring. Just north of us, the Rio Grande is protected as a wild and scenic river right as soon as it crosses into New Mexico. After you spend uh, 50 nights a year out in the wilderness, you notice what's changing and what the pressures are. I tell people it took 175 years to screw up this river. It's going to take at least 50 to fix it, you know? And fundamental changes will have to take place, too. Uh, a different sort of economic philosophy. BLM 1119 to Taos Central. I came into this job as a wildlife biologist and a firefighter. And for many years, I kind of working on the ground and not being able to change things that I saw that were damaging or dysfunctional out on the landscape. And uh, this job in law enforcement gives me the opportunity to kind of be a first-hand contact for things that are happening. A concern that I have is that the value of the public resource could be forgotten in our society. I think I see trends away from landscape, away from nature, in, in our youth, in our communities. And I think the survival of this landscape and the relationship that we have with it really depends on the cultivation of that, that mutual respect.
For more than 20 years, I've been leading educational hiking trips here in the Rio Grande del Norte. And we are here in the Rio Grande del Norte National Monument, which is 240,000 acres of protected public wildlands. The National Park is set up to protect the natural beauty of an area. We're here in a national monument. A national monument is set up not only to protect the natural beauty of an area, but the historical and cultural significances. We're right in the middle of the highest concentration of intact cinder cone and lava dome volcanoes in the lower 48. The gorge itself is actually a cross section of one of the largest lava flows on the planet. And so the Rio Grande has cut its way down through the basalt flows over less than a million years. You're talking about catastrophic flooding, cutting its way down through these basalt flows. And if you look out on the rim of the gorge on both sides, you can actually see the strata, the different layers from the different volcanic eruptive periods out here. And then you can see pretty clearly at least five layers of sandstone yeah. in between, right? So these are all uh, glacial thaws and ice age melts and things like that. Amazing. It's going to take some critical mass of people that are concerned about conserving rivers to, to actually get the job done. If we need to make more wild and scenic rivers. We need to make them longer. We need to make the act include watersheds so that watersheds get protected. And we need floods to have a healthy river. And we need fire return to the forest ecosystems to have healthy watersheds. Gracias por todo que nos damos en este bonito día. And to all the people that have passed in this river, may you sleep in comfort and continue to bless these waters as we move forward. Él es Dios, se le damos gracias a este bonito día. A circular journey, an infinite loop, track to the rhythms of renewal. The river, as migrant, as alchemist, as improviser, demonstrates to us that not only is change the true constant, but forward momentum charts its own course.